We're going to do a Sparrow Wallet walkthrough connecting your Trezor or Ledger device to Sparrow Wallet to keep your private keys offline and keep your funds and inscriptions a little bit more secure. So first we're gonna go ahead and download Sparrow, uh, make sure to type in the address. I have already downloaded it, so I'm going to show you what you will see when you open it up for the first time. Um, you might see a, a menu to choose a server, so you can choose a public server that's basically just using somebody's node to make sure that you receive transactions. Always make sure that this tab is going to be on the on, this toggle switch, otherwise you won't be seeing transactions you receive. You will still receive them, you just might not see it. So we're going to go to File, New Wallet, and we're going to name our wallet. Um, I'm going to name it Ordinals 1. And something that you should have already done before you got to this place is set up your Trezor or your ledger. So make sure you've gotten the seed phrase written down somewhere safe. Um, it's somewhere that nobody can find it. And then the next thing we're going to do is make sure our Trezor or ledger is plugged into the computer. And we're going to choose this taproot script type. So now that we have our Trezor or Ledger plugged in, unlocked, um, entering in the pin to make sure you can see it, we are going to click this connected hardware wallet. And since our Trezor or Ledger is connected, we are gonna scan. And I have both connected just for demonstration purposes, but I'm going to show you an example with a Ledger. So I'm going to press import key store. It's going to, um, show me some information here, like a derivation path, which is important for recovering funds and this XPUB. Um, so now that I have this, my ledger has already been set up. I'm going to just hit apply. I'm not going to do a wallet password. And now I can uh, see all these different options. So if you watch the last video, um, you will have seen the similar options, but this ledger actually already has a, uh, a an inscription in it. So when I go to my, my addresses, you can see there is some information there about an inscription. Um, if I was recovering this wallet for, for myself, uh, I would label this inscription to make sure that I know exactly what it is so I don't accidentally send it. Also, once you, um, when you go to receive, you will have a new fresh address. So it's going to be, since we already have received one in here, I am going to see this address being the one that is at the top here for receiving. You should only send one inscription to an address. It's okay if you, um, there's some automated softwares that will send them separately. You'll still see them in different UTXOs here. So UTXOs are kind of like bills. You could think of them like a hundred dollar bill or something. So you will see multiple even if you um, reuse the same address. And Sparrow gives you a nice little warning like, hey, you reuse this address. This is also for privacy in addition to um, making sure you don't accidentally send an inscription. Anyone that has this address can find out exactly how much funds are in associated with this address. So um, if for some reason you forgot to label it, no problem, we can still figure out which inscription this is. So we're gonna to go to the ordinals.com slash inscriptions, and I'm going to copy the output. The output can be found in this UTXO tab. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into the search bar, and I'm going to see my inscription here. So I'm gonna click that picture, and now I have the number for the inscription. I'm going to put that in here, astral, babe, and then the number, and that way I know exactly which one it is. Also, what I'm gonna do to make sure that I don't accidentally send this is I'm going to right-click that output and freeze it. And that way, if I have other addresses, like maybe I just have some, some Bitcoin in here, and if I go to send, I will not send anything from these frozen UTXOs. So that's how the connect a ledger, uh, the Trezor is the same thing. You would just file new wallet, name the wallet, Trezor inscriptions, for example, taproot, connect, scan, and then 
just import the key store. So again, your taproot and uh, your treasure and ledger should already have been set up um, with getting a seed phrase and things like that. Um, so you should have that written down. This is just using Sparrow as a way in an interface. You can, I can pull up a uh, ledgers live so you can see the, the benefit of using Sparrow over ledger live is that Sparrow gives you all this control. So if I have, um, if I have multiple UTXOs, multiple inscriptions, I can freeze them. I could choose exactly which one to send. Sparrow doesn't give you that. Sparrow recognizes that I have, uh, a UTXO here, but if I go to send this, it's going to just, um, it, I might not have the choice to choose which one to send. It's just a little bit more complicated. So Sparrow makes it uh, pretty straightforward. You can freeze your UTXO so you don't accidentally send them. You can choose to send the specific one that you want um, to make sure that you're sending the correct inscription if you would if you want to send it 